which they they they're saving up. They needed a they needed a new cow to provide them for with their milk. And they did some research and they found out that yes, they could get a cow. There's a they could buy a cow from Moscow, two thousand rubles. They could buy a cow from Minsk, one thousand rubles. So they sat and discussed what would they do and decided to be prudent. They decided to buy the cow from Minsk. And they got the cow from Minsk, and it was a very, very successful investment. She was a wonderful cow. She provided she was great milk, she provided lots and lots of milk. Very, very reliable. And they were very, very happy. And the villagers then started to think, look, she's such a great milker. Um, what if we could, uh, we might buy a bull, and we might be able to have more cows, which are good milkers. They thought, oh, this is a good idea, so they bought a bull. And, uh, and so they got the bull. And the, the bull was very enthusiastic. <laughs> um, he was certainly prepared to participate in, the, in this, this adventure. But unfortunately, the cow from Minsk wasn't. <laughs> and when the, whenever the bull approached the cow from behind, the cow would just walk away. If the, cow, if the bull approached the cow from the front, she'd start walking backwards. If the bull started coming from the right, the cow would move to the left. If the bull came from the left, the cow would start moving to the right. And they thought, what are we going to do? The cow's just not cooperating. <laughs> what will we do? But fortunately, a new rabbi had just arrived in town. A new rabbi. And they said, well, let us ask the rabbi. A man of great wisdom. They went and asked, them, what's the matter, the rabbi says. Well, Rabbi, we've got this cow, she's a very good milker, we bull, we want to make more cows, and we've got a bull, we want to make the cow and make lots more cows and have more milkers, but the cow's not cooperating. And they tell you, the cow comes this way, bull comes this way, cow goes that way. And the rabbi stopped and he thought and he thought and he pondered. And he said, Is this cow from Minsk? <laughs> <laughs> They said, yes. But Rabbi, how did you know? Oh, my wife's from Minsk. <laughs>
the next piece we'd like to play is called Saltbush Waltz, which is uh, written by uh, Andy Stefan. Um, Klezmer is a living tradition. It's not just an ancient 19th century tradition. It's a, it's, it's a contemporary, contemporary folk music uh, in, in the community. And in New York in particular, uh, since the uh, since the 80s, there's been a revival of interest in, in Kleshma. And Andy Stadman, who wrote this next piece, the Saltbush Waltz, is a very important uh, figure in that. When the, uh, 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 as the, when the Jewish communities emigrated to New York, uh, Kleshma became uh, influenced by the jazz traditions, and uh, which came to a, ended up with a new name for it called uh, this mixture of jazz and klezmer is known as rhythm and Jews. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of, and there's lots of, no, no, I'm not making this up. <laughs> uh, fantastically. And, um, and, and it's a great living tradition. Uh, this particular waltz by Ed Stepman is, is, uh, is a very beautiful, very melancholy, very melancholy waltz. But one of the things you notice in the in, in the klezmer music is a lot of it's in, in sort of in the minor mode, in case it sounds very sad and melancholy. But there's always there's always a spot in the music where it, it sort of blossoms into a major mood, and there's just this there's, there's this lift, like a bit of sunshine comes into it. And I think you might hear that in, in this piece. <laughs> 